Warning, if you have not seen whatever it is that I'm reviewing, this video may contain spoilers of key events. You'll have to consider this before watching the rest of the review. You have been warned. I know I'm late to the party with the Ori Emo Season 2 specials, but I haven't gotten around to watching these episodes until rather recently, since a number of you guys have requested it. I watched it, I thought about it, and have written my thoughts into a script, which will then be spoken and recorded and edited into a video. Thank you, Captain Obvious! Now, with the series at its conclusion, what did I think? I could definitely say that it has done something quite unusual for me, and it's that not only has it gave me a stronger realization of just what Ori Emo is about, but also made me stop and do a bit of a reevaluation of Ori Emo as a whole, and the results are thoughts that I can't be more eager to express. Though please remember that this is entirely subjective. Now, these last three episodes are about the true end of the story, and, of course, Kyosuke goes for the little sister route, finalizing the incestual overtones in full, becoming a fact that they truly love each other in a romantic way. A far cry from the initial subject of otaku acceptance to those who look at the surface, but as I watched all of this unfold and thought about it for a period of time, is incest really what this story is about? I kept thinking, does Oraimo really condone incest? Eventually, as I witnessed certain events unravel, I came to an epiphany that rocked my perception to the core. What if it's not strictly that, but rather uses the subject of incest as a route for a bigger picture that involves the viewer's own ability to be grabbed emotionally by its romantic comedy drama plot to fuel its main point? When this happened, I reassessed my own experience, how I reacted and invested, and found that I may have fallen into its plan without noticing it. And maybe, so did you guys. Now, you are probably wondering what I mean. What do you think that Ori Emo is about? To start off, it's something bigger than a drama or a comedy meant to excite us, sadden us, or make us laugh. Ori Emo is about the conflicts of logic and emotion, the value of one or the other. The key highlight of this being the confrontation between Kirino and Manami, the moment where a curtain is pulled to reveal everything that was once hidden. Manami represents the normality of Ori Emo, while Kirino represents everything abnormal about it. All the while, Kyosuke, the average guy character that we're supposed to project ourselves onto, chooses the latter much to the former's grief. One can say that this is condoning incest, but through further inspection, it didn't come across to me like that at all. In fact, I feel it kind of looks down on incest by the way of Kirino's abnormal nature. What normal person would emphasize and celebrate victory over attracting the affections of their own brother as if she single-handedly defeated the Chitauri from the Avengers? Nothing about this is okay, and it's put more into the forefront when it tosses this relationship into the fray of others and even starts a fight. Incest isn't good or normal from both a psychological and biological standpoint, something Monami brings up, and surprisingly, Kyosuke completely acknowledges and agrees, but is too driven by the love of his sister to let it go, leaving common sense at the curb for her sake. Hell, the others even let this happen, especially Kuroneko, who flat out sacrificed her feelings for the sake of his feelings. I've wondered why every single thing has to tie back to Kirino, and with these specials, I asked myself, when in my experience of watching Ori Emo have I not been driven by emotion? Yandere mode! Aya say was fucking boss, man! Fuck boss! Does the other really mean this? I wondered. It really makes you wonder how things will turn out. That Kuroneko. Being all awkward and not knowing what to do. I like Kuroneko, which created the biggest moment of overwhelming reaction from me throughout. Oh my god! Oh my god! That ending! And that did provide a good amount of amusement from me. This time taking the form of the Meruru pervert bike! God damn it, Mikagami, you sly motherfucker. We get this beautiful shot of the sunset and the buildings below, and seeing that reminded me why I feel invested in the show to begin with. I'll tell ya, this was all exciting, and results in a goddamn action sequence that's really compelling, albeit very brief, where it made me go, you know what? These two really did have great chemistry after all. But at the same time, I felt let down because, like Kuroneko before her, it all tied back to Kirino. The answer is not very often, and upon arriving to this conclusion, I delved into why, and this appeared. Oraimo is not strictly about incest, nor does it explore the subject to any meaningful depth. Oraimo is about values, not only the values of the characters, but the values of the viewer. What are your values, and what are your feelings about what's going on as the story commences in parallel to the characters? Every twist, every moment of dramatic tension, every heartfelt and comedic set piece makes you engage from an emotional aspect to the point of almost ignoring the logical aspect. Do you value true love knowing fully that's between two siblings? If they genuinely love each other, are the values moot because they're related? Is love of higher value than their blood? 
Is it the opposite? Kirino used to love Kyosuke purely through simple admiration for being a shining example, but over time, as Manami influenced and regressed him, she has then come to love him romantically for being there and gradually resembles old self, albeit in a different way, and the others are okay with this relationship because they obviously value the fact that they love each other over the fact that they are family and shouldn't be together in this fashion. And yet, there manages not to be a real good side or a bad side in this conflict. Despite the existence of Team Sense and Team Incest, neither one is right or wrong because they come from completely different standpoints. Manami is wrong for wanting to break up Kyosuke's love from an emotional standpoint, while Kyosuke and Kirino are wrong from a logical one. See, how the characters think and feel doesn't really matter to them as much as it matters to you. The hook, line, and sinker, if you will. Much like being deeply involved in an action movie that tosses consequences out the window, or how you can enjoy shooting the crap out of enemies in a video game, even if what you're doing might not always be considered a truly good thing, through a story about two people who have a disconnect, only to recouple as one starts to redevelop himself in a new way and fall in love like a little sister game, we see this development and are enthralled by the narrative centered around it, even if, again, it's about hardcore taku culture and motherfucking incest. Do you like Oriyama because it's a good comedy drama story that's very effective at driving emotion, or do you dislike it because it's about something that's taboo for a justified reason? Do you value Oriyama for its narrative, or devalue it for its controversial topic? Are you going to tolerate the incestual romance because of the story, or go against it because it's wrong? I like the crap out of Ori no Moto Season 2 because of how the story unfolded. It's comedy, it's drama, the characters, etc. It progressed from the first season in terms of development, and is my second favorite anime of spring 2013, but at the same time, I am not cool with its core subject matter. But I still like it nonetheless, because of the intrigue and excitement it brought me. Symbolically speaking, I am Kyosuke, or more importantly, anyone who likes Orinomoto despite the topic and themes is Kyosuke, which might be the point. If why we enjoy such a thing while knowing its topic is wrong is more or less what this was intending, it wouldn't have worked if it was bad at being a drama or a comedy, but lo and behold, that isn't the case. Emotional investment through narrative over common sense by principle, or Emo's way of involving the viewer. Logic loses, and in turn, Monomi loses, because, like those who like Oriemo, Kyosuke is ready to overlook common sense for the sake of loving someone he shouldn't be in love with, and, in the end, is probably the closest thing to a tragedy that Orinomoto is mustered. Monomi is not the villainous and boss. She is the reminder to you, the viewer, of what you are watching to begin with. It isn't totally about otakus, eroge, romance, brothers or sisters. It's an anime that revolves around the story of forbidden love and and what you think and feel about it, which you can say, in a weird, long-stretched way, it's about how we can value something so much that we forgive the basis for why it exists. You made me care about incestual romance. Touché, Oranomoto, touché. Incest is wincest? More like incest has made you its puppet. 